Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. So, after my return to YouTube, I got a lot of questions, a lot of messages of pretty much, um, pretty much I saw how popular Nuclear Overload got after I left, you know. And it's amazing because at the time, everyone thought I was full of shit. Uh, I remember the first time I made a Nuclear Overload video, you know, don't forget I called it Nuclear Overload for a fucking reason. Um, everyone was like, oh, this is the bro science, this is bullshit, it's not true, this and that. This guy is just talking out of his ass, right? And I told you guys, the science will always catch up to the bro science. Go watch my original video on uh, full body training, nucleus overload, high frequency, all that stuff. Years before it was popular. Years before anyone mentioned it, right? And I got so much fucking backlash. Because at the time, if you were not doing bro splits, you were full of shit. So everyone was like, oh, that's overtraining. That's not going to work. This guy's not an expert. What is he talking about? And I was like, guys, I have nothing to sell. I'm just showing you guys everything that I learned from ever since I was a kid. So this video, I'm going to wrap up. It's going to be the best video you will ever see on muscle growth, period. Right. So not only I'm going to cover all the bases on nucleus overload, but I'm also going to go into, you know, muscle growth and all that stuff. Right. So stay tuned, grab some popcorn and be ready. And everyone that said that nucleus overload was bullshit. Be ready to be proven wrong, and I'm waiting for your fucking apology after this. All right, let's get started. So we're going to talk about how it all started ever since I was a kid, uh, the crazy stories, and the scientific studies backing it up, right? And most of these studies actually came after I released the video, which is insane. By the time you're done watching this, you think I'm a fucking time traveler, but let's go. All right, how it all started. So first, let's talk about the four pillars of nucleus overload, right? Remember, I named it nucleus overload, right? I pulled that name out of my ass, and you're going to see exactly why I called it nucleus overload. But um, here are the four pillars. Extremely high frequency, so several several times a week to every day. In some cases, several times during the same day. Extremely high time on attention. Extremely high volume, right? And that's really weekly, monthly volume, whatever. And extremely high recovery periods. Those are the four pillars of nucleus overload. And I'm going to show you exactly why I, f I focus on these four and why I put them, you know, why I decided to put all four of these together. So you'll see. This is how it all started. Look at my fucking genetics. Okay. This was me at about nine or 10 years old. I believe 10 years old. Look at my genetics. Okay. Fat, puffy face. And now, you could, now you guys can see where the cheeks come from, right? Those will never go away. Fucking genetics. And look at the stomach. Look at the arms. Right. And that was my sister next to me. In fact, me and my sister ate the exact same diet exact same diet on the everything was structured on the you know on the plate same quantities whatever and she just met she just metabolizes glucose pretty fucking well meanwhile my gene boo over here as you can clearly see i was insulin resistant from the fucking kid but anyway the thing is i was always look at that look at those fucking cheeks but i was always obsessed with muscle growth even as a kid i was always obsessed with muscle growth uh growing up see those were my heroes growing up Anything that I watched, the buffest character was always my favorite character. I was obsessed with muscle growth. Yes, homo. Broly was just my dude. When that movie came out, I couldn't stop sneaking to my friends just to watch it over and over again. Because my mom wouldn't fucking buy it. Super you guys already know, if you know me, Vegeta's my number one character of all time. When he went Super Vegeta against Cell, I busted so many nuts. Uh, Venom in Spider-Man was always my favorite just because he was just buff as hell. Thor, Bane in Batman, you know, when Freeze the Wind, Max Power. So I was always obsessed with, with just huge, bulging fucking muscles. I was never the guy that, that I was into. I know it's the trend nowadays. People like super lean, super ripped physiques. I was never into that, right? I was always into, show me the biggest, most uh, buff dude with the biggest traps in this show. That was always my guy. So it led me to study muscle growth, right? It led me to, you know, even as a kid, I was always observing, you know, just any, anyone that was buff, I would always observe just to see what were they doing, you know, because I was tired of looking like this, right? And it led me to the wheelbarrow guys. Now, this is not the actual wheelbarrow guys that I mentioned in my stories. I actually got this from, holy crap, hold on, let me put a stopwatch so I don't make this video too long. Um, I actually got this just randomly on Google. But when I was a kid, my mom had a construction. My mom was, uh, you know, trying to build a house. So she hired a bunch of construction workers in West Africa. Right? I'm from Ivory Coast. And she hired them, and, you know, they had to come in. And, you know, it was a seasonal job, right? And those construction workers, most of what they did throughout the day was just load up wheelbarrows full of heavy shit, heavy cement, bricks, whatever. 
Because at the time, I mean, this was, what, 1990-something, West Africa, and they were not using machinery, you know what I mean? We were just poor guys trying to make a living. So they would load up stuff on wheelbarrows, and they would carry them up and down, up and down the penitentiary field. And I will observe them for one reason. All of those guys, all of those guys had some huge freaking traps. They were skinny. They were skinny because they were malnourished. I mean, come on. Right? They were skinny. They were, they, were, they were lean, whatever. But they just had big traps, huge traps, right? And I never understood why as a kid because I was like, and again, I was, I was, at the time, I was even less than 10. So I was like, I don't understand why the traps were so big, right? And I was like, man, these guys almost have no necks. Like, what is going on? As a kid, I didn't know that they were, they were pretty much doing farmer walks, you know, which is really what wheelbarrow carrying is. You're doing farmer walks all day. And they were loading up these barrels. But I didn't know that when I was a kid, right? It was just something that I observed. And I kept that in the back of my mind. You know, it's, it's not like at, at seven years old, I had fucking EMG uh, uh, um, electrodes and shit. So I could go up and put it all over their bodies and figure out, wait, what's going on? So we'll come back to the World Barrel story, right? But just keep in mind that those guys had huge, and it's not this guy. I just took a picture so you guys could see what I'm talking about. Um, the second thing that I noticed as a kid was we had these guys, where right? I call them the charcoal motherfuckers, right? Uh, there were merchants that would sell, um, I don't know if it's charcoal or charcoal. I don't know how to pronounce it. I guess it's charcoal. Um, by the way, English is my second language, so give me a break, guys. They would sell charcoal, right? And what they would do is they would load up these charcoals on the back of their bicycles, right? And then they would just ride it, you know, up and down. They would go from house to house and sell it. They would load these bicycles super heavy. Now, there was this one guy. Uh, it was him and his apprentice, right? Uh, they used to live around our house, and, and our house was like uh, in this area where there was huge hills, right? Our whole neighborhood, it was a bunch of fucking hills. And those two guys, the guy and his apprentice, they had some of the biggest quads I had ever seen as a kid. And keep in mind, they were skinny. So just skinny guys. Because remember, a lot of these guys are eating, you know, at a caloric deficit. They're poor as shit, whatever. So he wasn't buff, him and his apprentice. They were not buff. They just had these big-ass quads, right? Now, I didn't put two and two together. And again, mind you, I was a fucking low-ass kid, right? But as I got older, I realized these guys were riding up and down some of the steepest hills you could ever think of, right? 24, well, not 24, seven, but every single day. That was their job. Every day they would ride up the hill, sell the shark holes, ride back down, go back. And those two guys had some of the biggest squads you'll ever see. Meanwhile, the other shark hole uh, guys had normal size squads, right? Um, but I never made the connection. Obviously, as you're watching the video, you could, you could already see where this is going. And they were doing this every single day. So effectively, they were doing leg workouts, if not, you know, lunges on the bicycles uphill every single day, right? Let's move on. Fishermen, right? West, if you guys ever been to West Africa, you notice that West African fishermen, first of all, West Africans are already known for having good muscle mass, good muscle genetics, right? That's a fact, right? But West African um, fishermen blow every other category of West Africans out of proportion when it comes to muscle mass, right? Because every single day, I don't know if you guys ever saw fishermen in, in, in poor countries. Every single day, they're rowing, which is already a back workout. They have to row out on these cheap-ass boats, uh, sometimes they're rolling, you know, under intense currents, you know, it's just extremely hard. So it requires very, 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 um, uh, it's pretty much resistance training, right? It requires a lot of muscle mass. And they were doing this every single day. On top of that, when they would get to the to the uh, fishing uh, locations, there was a bunch of different activities. Some of them would actually dive into the water to try to, like, uh, uh, pick up. They would dive under the water with uh, buckets, right? And they would pick up uh, the sand, at the bottom of the river, because back then, and I think to this day, you could sell it for a lot of money. Uh, not a lot of money in, 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 in our, you know, um, not a lot of money to us, but to them it was a lot of money. So they would dive under the water, mind you, there's strong currents, and they would just, you know, fill up these buckets up to 30 pounds of sand, and then they would swim back up. And they would do this all day long. On top of the uh, uh, the other guys in the boats, the other guys in the boats were just fishermen. They would just go in, fish whatever. And they all had incredible physiques, incredible physiques, right? Because essentially they were just working out every single day, full body workouts. Do you know how much muscle mass you need just to be able to uh, carry that bucket of water from the bottom of the river, you know, to the top, on top of rolling with these heavy currents? So it was insane. These guys were ripped, ripped. And if you think, oh, oh it's just because of the black genetics, you'll see, I'm going to show you examples from countries that, that are known for not having a lot of uh, muscle mass. And look at these guys. Look at that. And I found this picture online, um, but again, you could go to Africa if you ever get a chance, and just go by the, you know, by the uh, riverside, the ocean side, whatever, and watch fishermen when they take their shirts off. These guys look like bodybuilders. In fact, 
I got this photo online because uh, uh, there was a journalist, I believe, who went there just to take a picture of these guys to say, like, what is going on? These guys are the epitome. So you mean to tell me all these guys just ma just magically have better genetics than the rest of the West Africans? Fuck no. It's the activity. Daily full body training. It's really, it's mainly upper body. And they are just ripped. And the funny thing is a lot of them don't even know that they're big because they don't, to them it's a living. They just do that for a living. They, they swim, as you can see here, right? Look at this guy to the left. This guy can win a natural bodybuilding show. Meanwhile, he's just trying to survive, right? Those buckets are heavy as shit. And these guys were so jacked. Even as a kid, I remember, like, whenever we went to Gumbasa, which was, like, by the beach, and we saw the fishermen, when they took their shirts off, it was insane. And I was always like, man, like, why are they so freaking jacked? You know? But again, like I said, as I got older, I figured out why, which is what, you know, which is what this, uh, the whole point of this PowerPoint slide is. You're going to see how eventually we're going to lead into all this. Right? And I had to cover up his butt. But look at his back, right? And it's not just him. All of them have that. All of them. In Cameroon, in Ghana, you know, you could look at any fisherman. Their backs are developed. Why? Because when you're rowing, think about it. You're doing rows. You're doing fucking dumbbell rows. That's what rowing is. So look at the real deals. Look at his mid traps and rhomboids. Insane development. Meanwhile, the other West Africans, they're relatively lean, but not as jacked as, as those fishermen were. All right, look at his shoulders, right? Rail delts, all that stuff, right? So I observed that growing up. You know, growing up, I observed that. But again, I didn't know the science behind it. To me, it was just like, man, I want to be that big one day, right? Look at this. Insane development. All right? Now, for you guys thinking, oh, this was just because they're black, because they're black, whatever, even though it doesn't fucking make sense, because in that case, I would be fucking jacked, right? I'm West African. You don't, you don't see me with that kind of uh, development. But anyway, let's go to Indonesia. These are sulfur miners long story short they go up volcanoes i'm gonna have to speed it up now because this video is already fucking long uh but they go up um they go up uh, these huge uh uh fucking volcanoes so mine sulfur right in order to sell it so they have to put it on their backs right and i saw this documentary uh, years ago right and it blew my mind how most of you guys are obviously skinny and you know they're malnourished undernourished whatever but they would carry these heavy ass things on their shoulders, on their upper backs, for hours on end, right? Walking up the volcano, walking back down, whatever. And I'm watching, I'm watching a documentary, and I'm like, what the fuck? These guys had some shoe straps for skinny dudes, right? Which obviously makes sense. I mean, if you ask anyone who you know who squats a lot or who squats every day or every other day, you're gonna feel it in your traps because obviously your upper back, your upper traps have to stabilize the you know you know the bar. So even though you're not really shrugging. Right, you're still putting that muscle under intense stress. It's lead to, it leads to muscle damage and all that stuff, right? And look, now this is definitely this is just damage, right? It's not even hypertrophy. This is just like fucking muscle damage, you know, leading to swelling, you know. But still, these guys had big traps for skinny dudes, right? And they were doing this every single day. If you, if you watch the documentary, every day, look at this. Look at his left trap. Now, it's a combination of obviously swelling from injury, from the weight being you know so damn heavy, but also hypertrophy, right? extremely developed upper back. and these are not africans look at that it's not a fucking african right right so so i don't want to hear that whole genetic stuff right every single day they were doing this right look at this old man look at look at his fucking trap muscle just bulging look at his arms look at his arms guys this guy's probably like what 80 years old 70 60 i don't fucking know well i'm exaggerating with 80 but he's old as shit and he's asian right so i don't want to hear oh well what are you guys gonna tell me well asians have have uh, uh, the most fast twitch, you know, uh, muscle fiber genetics. No, this is just repeated work over and over again. Heavy single weights every day, and that's the key. They were doing this every day, not because they wanted to be Jack, it's just to make a living, right? So you can see his traps here, right? I had to steal this picture online. See that? Look at that. Look at that. But anyway. Then it leads you to the Muay Thai story. You probably saw the video already, so I'm going to try to go really fast. Long story short, I found a story uh, when I was just studying Travis, you know, years ago. And uh, this guy, he was a Muay Thai fighter. Um, and the article was actually had nothing to do with, with, with bodybuilding. It, it was an article about fighting. I think it was MMA or some stuff. I, I don't remember if I can remember. And uh, the guy that was interviewing him asked him, he said, hey, why, did, why were your traps so big when you were young? Keep in mind, these guys were not bodybuilders. They were not intending to to whatever no so the old man told him and you can still find an article online but he told him when he was a kid he was extremely skinny and you know he was trying to compete in muita and his master told him hey in order to get your weight up i need you to carry two buckets of water 
heavy buckets of water up and down. I think it was for like two hours a day or some shit, every single day. So in, essentially, he was doing farmer walks, almost like the uh, the construction workers from when I was a kid, the Wilbur guys. That's the exact same trap development those guys had. So this guy was essentially doing farmer walks every day for up to two hours, just walking, carrying a heavy buckets of water. And the master told him, hey, uh, you know, that's what that's going to get you sore pretty much. So not only are you work for me, but at the same time, you know, it's going to get you bigger. And sure enough, um, his whole body didn't get big, but his traps got big. And that, and that helped him intimidate other fighters. And this was an everyday thing. He was doing this every single day for hours. Now, again, I'm not recommending you guys do this shit. I'm just, I'm just showing you guys the stories. All right. Moving along. Let me to the Johnny Jackson story. If you guys don't know by now, Johnny Jackson is my favorite bodybuilder of all time. Up there with Kevin Leroney, Ronnie Coleman, you know, Lee Annie, you know, all those guys. Why? You guessed it. I told you when I was a kid. I love buff dudes with big traps. I'm, I'm, I was obsessed with traps as a kid. So when I saw Johnny Jackson years, years, years ago, um, I was I, I fell in love. I was like, man, these guys' traps are fucking humongous. And I was wondering why his traps are that big. Now, of course, I know about steroids and all that stuff. I'm not an idiot, guys. I study bodybuilding and, and hypertrophy, you know, on my spare time. It's, it's one of my biggest obsessions. So I figured, hey, it, it can't just be the steroids, right? Because obviously, a lot of bodybuilders take steroids and don't have traps that big, right? It also can't be just genetics because 99.9% .9 of IBB pros have some of the best genetics in the world, yet they don't have that trap development. I mean, just look at Kai Green's traps. You know, look at Ben Pakowski's traps. You know, no hate to these guys, but, you know, why his traps are that big? So I kept studying, studying, and I was like, man, there has to be a reason. Long story short, uh, and you guys saw the video already, Johnny Jackson told this story about how when he was a kid, he wanted to impress people because he was, he was insanely strong as a kid. So he wanted to impress people. So at the end of all his workouts, he would put a ton of plates on the bar and he would just do a bunch of shrugs, 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 shrugs. At the end of every workout, you ready? Every single time. So this was a high frequency thing. It wasn't once a fucking week, right? He would do heavy shrugs. And I, and I, and I pictured it. I was like, wait a minute. If he put that much weight on the bar, his range of motion was shit. So effective, effectively, he was just getting crazy stress overload on his traps. Which you guys know, if you see my video on HSP training and why stretching is the best way to, uh, you know, to build muscle and all that stuff. Crazy eccentric action on his traps, right? And on top of that, that's not it. There was a, there was also a, a, another story how when he was a kid, he was working, I think it was like something about, I don't know if it was a farm or something. But he, anyway, he had to load up pallets into the back of a truck as a kid. And and the guy that hired him, you know, was always impressed by his strength. He was like, hey, you know, you know, you know you're really strong. So... Johnny Jackson loved that, and that, that made him want to do it even more. So what he would do is he would just, like, pile up these, pal these pallets every single time. And it was, essentially, he was doing power cleans, right? He was doing power cleans without even knowing it, right? Upright roll, power clean, whatever you want to call it. So he pretty much built up so much nuclei in his traps as a kid. And eventually, you guys know it, when he became a bodybuilder, and he started, you know, taking, you know what? Guess what grew even more, right? His traps. Look at that, right? I love Johnny Jackson. He's such a humble guy, too. Look at his traps, right? And he says that he, he even tries to make them smaller because it stops him from squatting because, <laughs> you know, he can't really put the... They're so big that they're, they're actually a detriment now. But too late, you know, he has too much nuclei in that shit. All right, let's move on. So then I started looking at just everything else, right? This is a, a strongman, right? So one of the one of the best strongman competitors, if you know this. Now, of course, I know drugs are involved in all that stuff. But I got, like I said, I'm showing you guys examples from people who are both natural and enhanced. So you can see that it has nothing to do with just genetics or whatever. It works across the board, right? Strongmen have some of the biggest traps in the lifting world. Why? Look at every strongman exercise. It's all trap work, right? Whether you... Uh, you're doing farmer walks or, you know, they're carrying that. I don't know what most of these exercises are fucking called. But you look at the typical strongman workout, and it's all traps. Traps, 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 traps. Indirectly, directly, that train of traps with such high volume and such high frequency is insane, right? And, of course, you add, a, you know, a little vitamin S to that, and you get stuff like this, right? See, farmer walks, right? And, and you think these guys do uh, uh, strongman training once a week or twice a week? No, they do it as frequently as they can. If not every other day. And of course, that takes time to recover and all that. But, you know, Olympic lifters, right? Look at this guy. Chinese Olympic lifter. Look at his trap development. And what do Olympic lifters do? Think about it. It's all snatch and cleans. Power clean, snatch, cleans. Power clean, snatch. And clean. It's all trap. All trap work. Because eventually, essentially, you're doing the deadlift off the floor, right? Deadlift. Then you're doing the clean, which is sort of an upright row using momentum. 
and then they're pressing it overhead, which is the, think about it, that's the function of the trapezius muscle. The deadlift is the function of the trapezius muscle, right? Because one of the, the, uh, the functions of the trapezius is to keep your arms attached to your body, right? So as you Pulling up, which is why I made this video about rack pulls years ago. And again, people thought I was full of shit. And now everyone is talking about rack pulls, right? So they're essentially doing that off the, off the floor, keeping their arms attached to their bodies, right? Put in, and then what, what's the other function of, of the trapezius? The upper traps help you with shoulder presses, right? Because they're attached to your fucking clavicle. So they're bringing it close to your, you know, um, to the back of your neck. So they're doing trap work every single day, whether they want it or not. And look at their trap development, right? Now, this story, now, he didn't do any good but this story is hilarious. Uh, this is Chris Cormier, by the way, for, for, you know, for you youngins. Uh, one of the greatest bodybuilders. Uh, sad he never went on Olympia, but he was a really, really good bodybuilder of the 90s. Uh, loved this guy. So, anyways, I was studying him, you know, years ago. Um, and he had this story, very interesting story. He, he said that when he was a kid uh, and he used to play football, uh, there was a... Uh, there, there was another kid in his high school team, right, his high school football team, that had these huge traps. He said his traps were so big, right, that he had stretch marks on them shits. Think about it for a second. Stretch marks on his traps, right? And guess what that kid did every single time? He said when everyone else was doing benching and all the typical high school football stuff, that kid was constantly doing shrugs and upright rolls, shrugs and upright rolls, shrugs and upright rolls. And he had some of the biggest traps ever. You think that's a coincidence? Now, again, I'm talking about the kid, not Chris Cormier, right? So when he told that story, I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. How many more stories do you need? Right? And this is Hansa. You guys remember Hansa? Hansa had some of the freakiest traps you could think about. And you guys you guys know what Hansa was, was called back in, uh, back in CSI? He was called Shoulders. Why? Because he trained shoulders every single day. Every day. In fact, he would train shoulders twice a day. In the morning, he would go to the gym, train shoulders, go to class. And then after class, we train shoulders again. All he wanted was big shoulders. But little did he know that he was training traps. Because every movement he was doing was really a trap movement. He was doing overhead presses, locking out at the top. And if you look at every EMG study, if you lock out at the top, whether it's an overhead press or a dumbbell press, the tension goes away from your shoulders into your upper traps. He was doing upright rows, which is one of the best exercises for traps. Front raises, lateral raises. It was just trap work 24-7. And sure enough, when he started uh, focusing more on optimizing the nutrition, his traps blew the fuck up. In fact, I, I, I remember one time I analyzed his routine, and he was doing up to 80 sets. Now, I don't recommend I'm just I'm just telling you guys stories. He was doing up to 80 sets of traps a week without even knowing it. It was just from the, the, the behind-the-neck presses, the upright rolls, the sideline rolls, uh, you know, like all the different, the back on back day, right, T-ball roll, all that stuff. And he had a crazy fucking mid back like that cobra back every single day right marco you guys remember marco same thing marco used to play rugby huge trap development from from his rugby days right huge trap development if you guys watch the old marco videos this is by far his best body part and he told me his coach will have him do literally just trap work because when you're playing rugby you don't want to get a concussion and the number one way to prevent a concussion is, is to literally train your neck and traps so they were doing a lot of trap and neck work every single day and to this day, his traps is one of his best body parts, right? Mike Tyson, you guys know the story. Mike Tyson used to do shrugs every day on top of neck work, right? And, of course, your neck ties into your trapezius. So it's very hard to, to train, especially the back of your neck. Very hard to train the back of your neck without engaging the trapezius. And he had a fucking ridiculous neck. Ballerinas, ballerinas in their calves. Again, I made videos about that. Ballerinas are on their calves every single day. Whenever they're practicing, pretty much they train calves every day. Calves, 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 calves. High volume, high frequency. And some, to be honest, most girls that are ballerinas have better calf development than all of us, <laughs> which is insane. You mean to tell me they just have good trap genet good calf genetics? Get the fuck out of here. More calves here. Arnold. Now, of course, I know Arnold is an outlier because you have the steroids, you have the genetics and all that, but still, Arnold had weak calves. You guys heard that story. He had weak calves growing up and... Even, even when he was on steroids, his calves were weak. So what did he do? He trained them every day. Right? And the rest was history. Skaters. Speed skaters. I don't know if you guys ever saw them doing the Olympics or whatever. They have phenomenal quad development. And that's not even their goal. They're just trying to fucking skate. <laughs> right? But because of the, the nature of their sport, they develop massive fucking quads. Massive quads. Now, again, I say massive relative to 
you know, the average person. Now, obviously, a bodybuilder is going to have bigger cars. But remember, bodybuilders trying to get big cars. These guys are not. They're just doing their job. And you think they fucking speed skate once a week? I get so mad when I hear about that once a week bullshit. It is not optimal, especially if you're not. It. Now, you think these guys skate once a week? Hell no. And look at their quad development, right? These are cyclists, right? Track cyclists. Again, watch them doing their, their stuff during the Olympics. They have monster fucking quads. And they, they, they literally train their legs one way or another, whether it's indirectly or directly, way more than once or twice a week. Very high frequency. Because, again, it's, you're not going to be an elite athlete and say, hey, my, my, my quads need to fucking recover. I don't want to overtrain. So I'm only going to fucking speed skate or, or do my cycling bullshit on Monday. Hell no. Now, don't get me wrong. Recovery is important. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that once a week bullshit has to fucking die. All right, same thing, sprinters. Look at sprinter squats, right? Extremely developed legs. You know, pick the best sprinter at your school. Look look at his legs, even if it's a girl. Right? You think they sprint once a week? Now, obviously, this guy's an outlier. I, I, it's funny, I was looking at pictures, and I was like, you know what, let me just put this one for laughs and giggles. Because this one, at first I thought it was Photoshop. It probably is. I don't even fucking know. But that's definitely an outlier, so we're not even going to talk about that. But shit, look at his squats. Um, and I think this picture too, same thing. I thought it was Photoshop. Yeah, probably is, but if it's not, Jesus. You know. Rowers, right? People that do this shit for a fucking living. Remember the fisherman example? Same thing. That's a white guy. He's not West African, right? Now, did you see the amount of volume and frequency these guys accumulate in one week when they're practicing for competitions? And what's the result? Huge biceps, huge real delts. And again, relative to the average person, not relative to a bodybuilder, right? Forearms, real deltoids, the muscles that are engaged in the rowing activity are bigger than average, right? And I guarantee you, if these guys started started bodybuilding, what body part do you think would be the biggest? Think about it. What body part do you think would grow the fastest, even if they use the same volume on everything else? Right? Boxers. Have you ever seen a boxer with weak shoulders, right? What are you doing when you're boxing? Practice boxing right now, right? Throw like fucking 50 jabs. Right? Throw a cross for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. What's going to happen? Your shoulders start to fucking burn. That's the main function of the shoulders. Right? Whether you're doing an uppercut, whether you're doing a hook, you engaging your deltoids. Even keeping their arms up to protect their faces, right? It's constant shoulder work. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Shoulder. And you think a boxer, you know, trains his punches once a week? Get out of here with that. Right? Look at that. Crazy shoulder development. Right? And and again, fishermen. Right? African fishermen. Look at that. Even from a young age, look at their shoulders. From a young age, these guys have to roll. That's literally doing cable rolls or dumbbell rolls every day. They don't fish once a week. Hell no. It's their livelihood. Look at that. Look at those shoulders. Look at the real delts right here. Look at that. And I had to steal this picture too. I hate people fucking put all that watermark bullshit on their pictures. Look at the trap development. Look at the shoulder development. Right? You got just wait till you go to West Africa. You will see this everywhere. Not just West Africa. Go to any place where where the the main uh uh where the the, the main source of uh, income for the, for those guys is fishing. You you will see some of the craziest physiques. And this guy's Indian, right? Look at his shoulder. He's old as dirt. And look at his shoulder. Looks better than most of us. Obviously, gymnasts, right? Gymnasts and their biceps. Now, again, some of these guys are under the influence. But again, I'm also showing you guys people that are natty. Right? Look at his shoulders. Look at the biceps. And that's all they do. What do gymnasts do? The crucifix pose, that's stupid strength from your side delts, Right? They're essentially doing pull-ups every damn day. They're doing headstand or handstand, whatever you, whatever you want to fucking call it, every single day, right? And the result, they have overdeveloped biceps, overdeveloped shoulders, and also overdeveloped, tri overdeveloped triceps from all the, the dip work. They do a lot of dips. You think they train once a week, those muscles? You think they train those body parts once a week? Look at that. Front delts, bodybuilders, right? And of course, everyone knows the study that came out showing that, you know, um, 
uh, most natural and enhanced bodybuilders have bigger front delts and stuff like that. Now, let me ask you this. What is the body part that most bodybuilders overtrain? What is the body part that gains the most? You show me any training split. I don't care if it's a split, if it's a full body workout. You show me any split. And you add up the volume and also the indirect volume, right, for every muscle. And you see that the front delts always, always, always have the most volume always because you're training even if you're doing a split you're training your front delts when you're benching you're training your front delts on shoulder day you're training your front delts on whenever you train triceps and you do close grip bench or dips right and in fact and you're also training your front delts when you're doing arm day if you have an arm day and you're doing a lot of uh, dips and like i said uh, sh uh pressing movements front delts. so it is the it is the muscle that gains that has the most volume for natural and enhanced bodybuilders and what is our most Develop body part for most of us it's our front delts so the notion that you have to train a muscle once a week even if you're on the split you're not training your front delts once a week pure bullshit right and of course you know prisoners right i told you guys the story about when my friend i'm not gonna mention his name when he got locked up for stealing some bs whatever um came back i think it was only like what, six months and he had and of course it's not him in the picture i just had to find a random picture online but he had insane chest and tricep development and it was just his chest and his triceps and you wonder what he was doing push-ups every single day he told me he was bored he had nothing to do so he would just do push-ups and of course you know you in jail you know you, you know you obviously have to try to get big um so he would just be in his cell and just doing push-ups push-ups every single day accumulated do you think he did 10 sets of fucking chest work a week when you're doing push-ups morning evening afternoon and he came out with this huge chest and triceps, huge. And of course, when he came back to you know civilian life, eventually everything went back down because he stopped training. You know, he stopped doing his push-ups and all that, whatever. But that was when I was, I, I, remember, I think I was like 17 years old. And I was like, holy cow. Like, And that's when I had started working out. And I was like, I'm over here lifting weights and shit. Mind you, I was doing splits because I read it online. You know, you got to do splits. You know, everyone was saying, you got to do splits, you got to do splits. And I was like, I'm over here doing splits and shit, uh, lifting weights. And this guy... Is so much bigger just doing push-ups. You know, what is going on? Now, this is obviously Arnold's chef. This is Arnold. But it's the Ola story. You guys heard of the Ola story a million times, right? That's my Nigerian friend back when we were training at CSI. I would never forget that. He came in. He wanted to, you know, have a big chest. That was his goal. He just wanted to have a big chest. He didn't care about every other muscle. He just wanted a big chest. So he came in, and he just decided to bench press every single day. And we used to laugh at him. You know, I remember, like, because I was an idiot. I was like, no. The science says you got to train the muscle once a week, you know, like a fucking retard. And he was like, man, fuck that. I'm training chest every day. And I was like, man, you're going to overtrain. You're going to get smaller. Long story short, a few months later, he had one of the biggest set of packs I had ever seen. And I picked this picture of Arnold because that's exactly what his chest looked like. Just, in fact, Arnold is obviously leaner, you know, you know, obviously all I had more body fat. But it was just big and round, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I remember everyone was like, I remember one of my friends told me, he was like, Dude, did you see Ola's chest? Because I, I remember I took a break from CSI. That's when I dropped out. And they were like, did you see his chest? And I was like, what are you talking about? And when I saw it, I was like, oh, my goodness. His chest was just massive. And he, he would literally come to the gym and just do bench press, bench press, bench press, bench press, go home, come back next day, bench press, bench press, bench press. Now, again, I don't recommend that to everybody. Again, you know, I'm going to explain everything in the conclusion. I'm just showing you guys the stories. Everyone is their friend, whatever. I'm just showing you what these guys were doing. So don't be an idiot and go over there and snap your shit up. But anyway, his chest blew the fuck up. Right? And I remember I even hit him up uh, after I started my YouTube channel. And I was like, dude, like, uh, do you remember, like, your, your your chest workout from back in the days? And he was like, yeah. You know, every time I went to the gym, I just did chest. <laughs> that's all he did. I still got the Facebook conversation saved. You know, he said that's all he did. You know? And he, he, he wasn't the only one. You know, check out my boy Alex. You know, and I, I think he, he has, uh, he started uploading again. But Alex was, was over there in that same gym. Another guy that has a phenomenal chest, same thing, chest every day, you know, me. And then when I, when I started implementing with my shitty genetics, right, this, my chest is my best body part, my chest, because I did so much nucleus overload on it. And in fact, I did it by accident, right? Uh, I was doing push-ups every day, not because I knew, because at the time I didn't even know uh, the science behind it, right? I was doing push-ups every day because I was in swim class and it was this friend of mine, his name was Samuel, I think, no, Emmanuel or Samuel, I don't fucking remember. Um, and... He was able to do 50 push-ups in a row, right? And he would do that to, to kind of get a pump before he went up, you know, to the dock because he wanted to impress the girls. So he would do push-ups every, you know, like 50 push-ups every day uh, in the locker room, and then he'll go upstairs. 
And I was mad because at the time with my skinny fat ass, I could only do like fucking five or 10 pushups. So I decided I was going to practice pushups every single day. And eventually I got to a hundred pushups. And when I started bodybuilding or when I started lifting and eating, right, my chest blew the fuck up. And at, at first I thought it was genetics. I was like, oh, maybe I do have good genetics. No. Eventually we'll start putting all these stories together. I remember, wait, I used to train chest every day for over a year. Right? And now, and mind you, my bench is weak. Remember, I have two huge shoulder injuries. So I can't even bench. Like 225, the most I could do is like 10 to 12 reps. My shoulders just hurt like hell. So my chest was mainly developed from doing push-ups every day. Right? And as, as you can tell, eventually once I, once I put nucleus, when I, once I put the pieces together, um, I was able to literally implement it on almost all my body parts. You can see I did it. Look at my genetics on the left side. Right? For people that think, oh, Megan has good black genetics. This picture at the top right with my fucking hat on, I thought I was the soulless guy in town. Guess what? This, that was after three years of lifting. After three years of lifting, look at look at my arms on that picture at the, at the, at the top left. See at the top left? Where I have my black hat on and, you know, my white tank top thinking I was swole. Look at that. Thinking I was a pretty boy. Ugly as shit. Look at my arms. Look at my arms after three years of lifting. For the, oh, vegan has good genetics. She, my daughter will have bigger arms after three years of lifting than at that point. And the picture right below it, when I got my hat on and then the black shirt, right? Again, look at me thinking I was swole. Guess what? That was after four years of lifting. Four years of lifting and look at my arms. Now... After I implemented nucleus overload, look what happened to my biceps. Look at my arms. Look at my back. Look at my abs. Right? I remember I was doing abs every day. In fact, I was keeping my abs flexed all day long. In fact, I was doing it ever since I was a kid because of my fat ass belly. So I did nucleus overload on my abs, on my triceps, on my biceps, on my lats. At one point, I wanted... Um, uh, I remember I was obsessed with, with having big legs. That was before my knee, um, my knee injury and my right foot motorcycle injury. So I was training legs every day. My legs were blowing up, right? And and most of these pictures, look, I'm I'm taking most of these pictures at home in a relaxed state, except the one here where I literally did this one in the gym. Nucleus overload fucking works. And that was my uncle. You guys know the story of my uncle, right? What was the story behind my uncle's back? He was skinny as hell. I will never forget that. My uncle was skinny as hell. Skinny as fucking hell. And his weakest body part, he said at the time, was his legs and his back. So guess what he did? He started doing back every day. And this is before I even knew what nuclear civilization was. This is way before that. I remember I saw his back and I was like, what the fuck? And I thought he was on steroids. Mind you, he was, at, at the time, he was doing his PhD for computer science. He didn't give a shit about bodybuilding. All he wanted to do was just look good, be in shape, whatever. And he, he, he would train his back every day within the first few years. He said he would just do pull-ups every single time because he wanted a wide back. And then when his back got huge, he stopped doing, you know, the pull-ups every day. But remember, the nuclei don't leave. And to this day, he has, he has a bigger a bigger back than most fucking bodybuilders. And he's not a bodybuilder. He literally just, you know, went to the gym, trained extremely high volume, extremely high frequency. He was doing nuclear solo without even knowing it. Right? David Goggins, you guys know that story. I made a video about it, right? He had the, at the time he had the world Guinness record for most pull-ups done in one day. And he has wide ass lats. This is a bad picture, it's a bad angle, you can't really see it. But if you watch the actual interview, his lats were huge. Huge lats. And of course, you know, you don't you don't become a, a world uh record holder in pull-ups by doing pull-ups once a fucking week. This is an everyday high frequency thing. Right? Swimmers. Look at the, the, the lat development of swimmers. Right? Insane back development. And of course, I don't know if you guys know how to swim, but it's mainly lat work. If you're doing the breaststroke, that's lat work. Uh, you know, because you're mainly doing adduction, right? You're doing a lot of adduction, you know, which, which is the main function of the lats. Right? When you're doing the butterfly, freestyle, it's all lat work. They, they essentially doing pullovers. Look at that. And this is a girl. Right? Chris Jones, you guys remember that? I made a video about that. Um, uh, when I was making the videos on nucleus overload, I asked him, I was like, dude, like, why is your back so fucking wide? Right? I don't know if you guys ever saw Chris Jones in real life, but his back is way bigger than you think it is. If it looks big on YouTube, wait till you see his back in real life. Wide ass back. Right? And he said, he said, hey, you know, like, uh, I, think for, I think it was like two or four years. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he said for the first four years, uh, and mind you, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. He wasn't doing nucleus overload. Nobody fucking knew about nucleus overload. It was just accidental. 
He said for the first four years of lifting, he would do pull-ups every single day, weighted pull-ups every single day because he wanted to have a pump to impress the ladies. <laughs> so he was just doing it just to get a pump. But try to do the math. Try to figure out how much volume that is if you're doing four sets of pull-ups every day. Even if you only train five times a week, that's 20 sets right there just for pull-ups. That's not counting his back day. And sure enough, what is his best body part? What is his best body part? His lats. His lats are insane. And his biceps, of course, because, you know, if you're doing pull-ups, you're training your biceps. Again, roars, right? Look at the biceps of a professional uh, rower. It's insane, right? Look at the bicep development. Look at the forearms, right? Try rowing. It's all forearms, biceps, rail delts, lats, mid traps, right? And then again, same thing with the gymnasts, right? Bicep work, right? This fo this photo is so insane. I actually thought it was Photoshop. Like I said, maybe it is. Like, because th this one is just too fucking insane. And this video, I saw that years after I made my Nicholas of Low videos. Uh, Dave Half. I love this interview. Somebody sent it to me. Um, go check it out. The link should be in the description. But it's a great interview. And in fact, you know, Dave Half, apparently he had huge biceps when he was younger, huge arms. And his workouts consisted of literally him coming in, doing high reps, high repetition work, high frequency work. So he would essentially train arms every day. Um, because he said some days he would do like curves and whatever. The next day he would do like dips or stuff like that. So, in fact, he was training. He was arms every day, nuclear solo. You know, watch the interview. It's a great interview um, that he did with Rick Drayson. Um, I, I love watching the OGs talk, you know, because it, it just shows you how they were able to figure shit out with just bro science, you know. And again, I'm not against science. I love science. I'm always looking at research. I have so many freaking studies in my laptops. I love it. But at the same time, I balance it with anecdotes of people who's, you know, who've done it for years. You know, Leroy Cobra. You guys want to study a Leroy Cobra, right? Train, he was obsessed with having big biceps, so he trained his biceps. I think it was like at least three times a week or some insane amount. And when he was younger, he would train him even more frequently. You know, C.T. Fletcher, you know, one of the most respected guys out there, right? And what was his story? He said that uh, I, I remember C.T. Fletcher became big even after uh, the, my first Nuclear Solo video. So when he mentioned that he was training his biceps every day, I was so fucking happy because I was like, yes, a jack dude that actually, you know indirectly did nucleus below when he was younger you know he said he would train his arms every fucking day he was obsessed with it and he does not have small oh now of course again like i said there's other things involved and things like that but you get the picture All right ronnie coleman i hate mentioning him because he's just a genetic freak but same thing ronnie says that when he was younger he would train his arms every day you know and obviously frank mcgrath same thing frank mcgrath has some of the sickest forearms in the bodybuilding world sick sick forearms and guess what his story is when he was in high school, the girls at his high school used to love guys with big forearms. So he would, he said he would train forearms every single day before going to school. And then he would roll his sleeves up so that everybody could see his forearms. So he would train them every single day. And he has huge forearms. Just like mechanics. Look at mechanics. Old school mechanics, before all these technology came around, they have some crazy forearm development. Not a coincidence. right? The avian study. Everyone's familiar with the avian study. Right? When they put the weight on the birds. It's a great study by Ozzy Antonio that he did years ago. You know, by which I love Ozzy Ozzy Antonio's uh, work. But short, long story short, uh, you know they put the weight on the birds. You guys know it. You know, good look, good, you know, good look at it. Um, and then it's the craziest growth that we've seen in the literature, right? I think it was like two hundred or three hundred percent growth. Um, but everyone for, everyone focuses on the stretching part, which is important, right? But everyone forgets that that wasn't a once a week shit, right? That was very high frequency. I think he was doing it like day one day two off, back on day three or something like that. So the bird had that tension placed on their muscles very frequently. It was high volume, high frequency. And look at the size. Like, look at the gains that came. You know, you have the hyperplasia, you have the hypertrophy. I mean, it was insane, right? Nucleus overload. Lions. You guys know I love lions, so I study I study lions a lot. Um, and one documentary I was watching, this is, this is the lions in Botswana. One of the coolest stories ever. Lions doing nucleus of a low. So here's what happened. So the, the river, the lions were, I think they were hunting like a herd of buffalo. And then they ended up stranded on a fucking island. It was an island somewhere in the Duba Plains, you know, somewhere in Botswana, somewhere in Africa. And normally lions hunt different prey. Um, but because they were stuck on that island with a herd of buffalo, that's all they hunted, right? So I think for like two years or plus, two years or more, they were just hunting these buffaloes every day. And, and you guys, I don't know if you've seen a buffalo hunt. It's not easy. You're literally just working out. Your entire body. On top of that, that's not what got them sore. What got them sore was the fact that lions normally don't like water.
but because they were stranded on that island, there were a lot of swamps. So uh, the uh, the people that were observing the phenomena happened, they noticed three things. The lions were doing three things every single day. One, they were either hunting the buffalo and fighting and all that stuff, right? Which is pretty much a full body workout. Two, they were spending a lot of time swimming because they had to keep up with the herd. So they would swim, 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 even though lions don't really like water. But they were swimming a lot more than the average lion, um, which obviously are, you know, a workout. And three, when they were not swimming or when they were not hunting, they were trading water in the swamps. So they were constantly under resistance. Even the person I was recording the documentary knows nothing about bodybuilding. He mentioned, he said they were constantly under resistance. And when they came back years later, they found out that every lion, every lion, female or male on the island, were buff as shit. In fact, the female lions that were stuck on the island had more muscle mass than the male lions back on the mainland. And they are now officially the largest lions in existence, as far as muscle mass goes. They were nucleus overload every single day. You guys should watch the documentary. It's insane. You know, I couldn't get really, uh, really good pictures, but watch the documentary. You'll see insane development in the tricep, their chest muscles, everything they were using to swim. Right? And of course, what was the game changer? The game changer was the rat study, right? Because once I had all these stories put together, I was like, man, why? Because everyone was like, John, you full of shit. It doesn't work. And I was like, guys, I've seen it ever since I was a kid. Yes, it, I'm over here doing bro splits and shit because that's what the science says. Or that's what the fucking magazine say. But I was like, I can't ignore the overwhelming evidence. And the game changer was that rat study uh, years ago. When I looked at the rat study uh, where they... Um, they injured the, I think they broke a, I, don't know, I forgot, it was so long ago. I think they injured like the, the rat's leg or something. So the other leg had to overwork. The other leg was in fact, in quotes, overtrained, right? Because it had to carry, uh, it had to do more work than usual. And uh, what the scientists noticed was that the amount of nuclei, the amount of satellite cells in the rat's uh, uh, overtrained leg increased as well as the muscle mass. And that's when everything clicked. Everything fucking clicked. The moment I read that study, because I remember I was always reading studies. You know, the moment I read that study, everything clicked. Because I had studied protein synthesis and RNA transcription and translation and all that stuff, but things didn't first make sense until I read the study. It finally brought together the reason why people that were overtrained or overexercised. I'm not talking about overtraining as like an overtrained state. No, I'm talking about overtraining, overworking a muscle. The reason why I used the word overtraining at the time was because that's what everyone fucking called it. Whenever I said Guys, I think you should train your muscle, you know, more frequently. They're like, oh, that's overtraining. So that's where the term came from. And finally, I said, fuck it. I'm going to call it nucleus overload based on that study. Because the nuclei, and again, you see uh, uh, satellite cell A, I mean, sorry, muscle cell A and muscle cell B, um, the cell with the most nuclei is going to grow faster. Now, how do you get more nuclei? You, you can see the satellite cells are in blue, right? That's surrounding the cell, right? And you guys know, because right, it's funny how right now everyone is talking about satellite cells and stuff like that. At the time, I don't give a shit. I was the only guy talking about this stuff. People thought I was fucking crazy. And now everyone is talking about it. Oh, the same people that were like, Jonathan, you're full of shit. Now they're like, oh, yeah, so muscle memory, satellite cells. Shut the fuck up. I get so mad, right? Because at the time, they were like, oh, this is bro science. This is bro science. And now everyone's fucking talking about it. And I, and I was like, dude, satellite cells are in the literature. I didn't make this shit up. And so again... I was going off a tangent. So um, how do you multiply, how do you get more nuclei, right? And the, li the literature is consistent. By overworking a muscle, you get an increase in nuclei. And the more nuclei you get, the faster that muscle can grow in the future. And that's why I kept telling you guys, you're not going to see the gains right away. Because first, the body has to increase the nuclei. Then, once you have enough nuclei, the muscle grows faster. Which is also why when you come back from training, you put on that muscle so much faster. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I explained this a long, years ago. All right. Go back and watch the old videos. And that's when I was like, oh, shit. Everything clicked. And that's when I called it nucleus overload. That's how I coined the term. Because I was like, look, you, you, you have fucking nuclei everywhere. And I couldn't find a word that, that, that was cooler than fucking nuclear overload. <laughs> and that was another study that I looked at at the time, uh, which showed mTOR and recovery, right? And that's why I made a lot of videos about that, how if you keep training, because I wanted to understand why is it that all these stories, all these people, why is it that's when they took a long break and came back that they saw the gains, right? How, why is it that they didn't see the gains um, while they were, you know, while they were in course overtraining the muscle? How come the gains came weeks or months later after they took long breaks? And then I found this study, 
which shows that mTOR, which is the you know one of the main enzymes involved in protein synthesis. You guys know, watch my videos on protein synthesis, right? You have you have a transcription. That's when you read the you know the, the genetic code, and you have translation. That's when you actually you know grab the amino acids from the diet and put them in a sequence to create proteins and muscles, right? mTOR is one of the main enzymes involved in the second part, the translation part. In fact, myostatin works by fucking up the mTOR pathway. So anyway, long story short, they found out that if you detrain, you actually resensitize mTOR. So pretty much the longer you train, the more you train, eventually mTOR gets less and less sensitive. And when you take a long break, you reset the sensitivity of mTOR. So when you come back, not only do you have the nuclei, right? from the uh you know the overloading phase but you also have a more, a more sensitive mTOR so you combine the uh you know in quotes high volume high frequency in quotes you know overtraining um phase with the huge recovery phase and boom you have mTOR and satellite cells working together to give you a bigger more jack and that's when i put these together and said boom nucleus overload there goes the program guys do extremely high frequency pick and the reason why i picked four weeks i said do four weeks was because from the literature and from the anecdotes that's all you fucking needed because most of these guys were doing seasonal jobs even in africa it was a seasonal thing and then they would take breaks and they would come back and it'll be bigger and bigger and bigger right so that's what i said four weeks because building muscle is an adaptative process the body doesn't need three years to adapt now of course you know building muscle is a slow progress but really the body's trying to do it as fast as possible because it's doing it not for you to look good. It's doing it for you to survive. And it doesn't take three years. If if you put the body under stress and it takes three years for your body to adapt to that stress, you're going to fucking die. So your body's actually trying to build muscle as fast as possible. You just keep fucking training that shit once a week and thinking, oh, oh, that's all I need. No. Right? So that's why I put two and two together. All the stories from my childhood... The studies that I showed at the time, put them together and designed the nucleus of the program. Four weeks of, in quotes, overtraining. I'm not referring to the overtraining state for you retailers out there. I'm talking about overworking the muscle. Now in the literature, they call it overreaching, whatever you want to fucking use, right? Followed by one week or two weeks of recovery. The longer the recovery period, the better. Now obviously, we're going to need more studies to find out what is optimal, but you want to you recover long enough, you know, so that... The nuclei grow and stuff like that. The body adapts. mTOR gets reset. And when you come back after that and go back to your normal program, the muscle grows even faster. That was the theory behind nucleus of load. And I was met with so much ridicule from the fitness community. And now everyone's fucking talking about, oh, nucleus of load. Oh, da, da, da. Some people are trying to rename it and shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. Right? There's only like a handful of people that actually believed it at first. Obviously, uh, Alex, shout out to Alex from Alpha Destiny. Um, uh, I forgot who else at the time, but like, there's a there's like a handful of channels who actually believed it at the time. But everyone else was like, "Oh, it's 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 not supported by the science. You have to train once a week. You have to train a muscle once a week." Some some people even say you gotta train once every two weeks or some bullshit. I was like, guys, I love science. I get what you're saying, but I'm not gonna disregard the overwhelming evidence. You gotta put two and two together. You gotta combine science and both science. And I sort of said, eventually, the science will catch up, and look what happened. Well, of course, and you got the Porti Sinister study, right? Um, this one was old, right? And this one I've been read before I, I, I quit, uh, before I put the the program together, um, where it, it shows, and everyone knows the study, right? Where protein synthesis for most people, especially if you train, right? This is this is the untrained people, but especially if you train, it peaks after 24 hours. Some people it's even less than 24 hours. And protein synthesis is the building of muscle. That's what that's what's called protein synthesis. You synthesizing proteins to build muscle. So if protein synthesis goes down, you're not building muscle. So people think, oh no, maybe there's the no no, there's no other way. The only way to build muscle is by protein synthesis. Even if you lower protein breakdown, you still have to increase protein synthesis. Or you still have to have a stable protein synthesis. So if protein synthesis goes down, what are you doing? And of course, everyone knows this now. I know this. Everyone knows this now. Everyone knows you gotta train a muscle more than once a week. But motherfuckers were not saying that years ago. Be before I left um, YouTube, everyone was saying, no, once a week, bro split, bro split, bro split. And again, I'm not saying you cannot grow from bro splits. I'm just saying it's not the fastest, most optimal way. Right? I gave, I prescribed bro splits to some clients because it depends. Again, if, if people, uh, you know, was, was stick to bro splits more, give them bro splits. But even in bro splits, you're not training a muscle once a week. You're training your triceps on chest day, arm day, shoulder day. You're training your front delts on like three different days. 
So might as well do high frequency because you're already doing it if, you, if you're doing bro splits, right? And, and some people used to say, well, you know, well, a lot of people make gains. Or, I'm not saying, it's like people are fucking retarded. No one is saying that you're not going to build muscle doing bro splits. Me saying that uh, a fucking cheetah is faster than a horse does not mean that a horse is slow. It just means one is better. Especially if you're natty. But anyway, you know, that's how muscles adapt. That's how muscles adapt. Muscles adapt from repeated work, right? You guys know the sprinter and marathon analogy. It's fast twitch, slow twitch muscles. How does a marathon runner slow twitch muscles adapt? You think it's by running once a week? No. In the same way, Look at any track athlete, any you know, any in any, any sprinter. How do their fast twitch muscles adapt? Frequency, volume, and frequency. They don't sprint once a week. Slow twitch muscles ad adapt by obviously staying small, right? But by also increasing mitochondria and energy efficiency and all you know, you know, all that bullshit. Fast twitch muscles adapt by growing bigger. But for them to adapt, the stimulus has to be frequent. Right? Because what is slow twitch muscles made to do? Endurance. What are fast twitch muscles made to do? To contract and produce force. So you need to contract and produce force frequently. Right? And that's it. That was the four pillars. You saw the stories, right? Extremely high frequency, extremely high time on attention, extremely high volume, extremely high recovery periods, right? The high frequency, we already uh, I showed you a ton of examples, doing it every day or every other day or whatever, which is why I prescribe full body workouts. And, and again, now everyone is talking about full body workouts. I get mad because at the time, I was getting shit on for, for talking about this stuff. There was like a handful of channels recommending full body workouts. And now everyone's talking about full body workouts. The same clowns who used to say that it was, you know, it, it was bro science and no, you know, you had to train it once a week or whatever. That's why I prescribe high frequency. Even if you're not doing nuclear silver load, train them also more frequently, right? And then the, the high time on attention. What was I saying? I was saying when you're doing nuclear silver load, watch the videos. I said, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be heavyweight. Because uh, from all the stories that I looked at, not every story had extremely heavy weights. A lot of times it was just high time on the tension. So I was telling people to maximize recovery so that you're not in an overtrained state. You could do lower, you know, lower weight, high reps, and you could do drop sets, rest pause, whatever. Watch my videos. I was mentioning that time and time again. The goal was to mimic blood flow restriction. Right? And people and people will say, oh, it doesn't work because you got to lift heavy weights to get big. The only way you get big is by getting stronger. Bullshit, bullshit. Stuff that is debunked now. But at the time, people thought I was full of shit. Right? Extremely high volume. People were like, oh, you got to do. No, that's too much volume. Nuclear solo, that's too much volume. You're going to get overtrained. You're not going to whatever. Now we're finding out. In fact, let me, let's, let me show you guys the studies now. Let's look. More nuclear, more muscle. Boom. We got a study in 2018 that showed it. Right? At first, your muscles can grow based on the, their current nuclei, but in order for you to grow past that point, you need more nuclei. And this was study done in 2018. I made my videos about nuclear silver load in 2011. So what did I did? I fucking time travel, right? Extremely high frequency. Boom. Study from one of the most respected guys in the in the, in the hypertrophy world, and I love him so much because I love his papers. His papers are detailed another thing i love about him is that he's not afraid to admit that he's wrong and that's the whole point of science is you got to constantly find out okay well maybe this study was a flawed you know you know had a flawed design let's try it again let's try it again you know he's constantly improving science i love scoring felix like, literally whenever a study comes out from this guy i'm one of the first guys lined up to read it and dissect it because i just love his work he has such a humble approach to hypertrophy he just he's just looking for the truth and again that's that's the point of the channel that's why i'm looking at science and bro science because i don't care about who's right who's wrong i just want to know what is the truth but anyway he's going for fucking tangent um effects of resistance training on measures of meta and again that's the meta analysis and what did it find high frequency training is more optimal than training muscle once a week duh duh right and, and again this came out what this came out years after that the First nuclear solo videos. So again, time travel? I don't think so. That's why you got to look at the bro science sometimes. You got to look at the bro science. And I keep telling you guys, the science will catch up. And it's exactly what happened. Right? This, this study was in 2019. High resistance training frequency enhanced muscle. This study, they compared full body workout to splits. So on full body, they were training the muscle five times a week. Splits, I think, was like once a week, right? 
And guess what? Volume was the same. So I don't want to hear, well, they did more volume. No, volume was equated. And they were trained men. And guess what? More gains. I'm referring to hypertrophy, not strength. More gains in a high-frequency group. So even if you're doing 20 sets a week, right, you're going to get more gains if you split that up as opposed to doing it once a week. And this was this started getting money in 2019. So for all the retards who were, who were, you know, fucking saying I was full of shit and I was making shit up and da 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 back in 2011, 2012, 2013, what are they going to say now? Uh, sorry, fuck out of here. Right? Next one, extremely high time on attention. People people were saying, high reps don't build muscle. Nucleus will won't work because high reps don't build muscle, da 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 And I was like, guys, like, like <laughs> if I tell you eating oranges is not, you know, you know, you know, it's not healthy, you know, you know, it's gonna it's gonna give you this and that. And you see a bunch of people fucking eating oranges and they're doing just fine. I mean, like, come on, like, it's a stupid example, but you get the point I'm trying to make. It's like you cannot just say, well, uh, uh, uh you know. This doesn't work because I don't have a study for it yet. What if the study comes out in five years or 10 years? Experiment. And now, sure enough, right? Now, of course, we, we already knew about occlusion training. That's old. That's that's even before uh, I came up with nuclear civil load, right? But now they're, they're finding out that, oh, look. If you equate, you know, all the other factors, you could build just as much muscle doing lightweight. And I made so many videos that, in fact, there's a video called Stronger Does Not Mean Bigger. I got so much hate for that video because everyone was saying, you got to get stronger to get bigger. And I was like, shut the fuck up. You can get bigger without getting stronger. All you got to do is lower the weight, increase volume, and eventually when that weight becomes too easy, yeah, of course you're going to have to increase the weight when that, when that, when that, um, that rep wrench becomes too easy. But you don't have to get stronger as far as my bench is 315, I have to get it to 350 to get a bigger chest. No, you could cut that bench to 225 for 10 reps or 185 for 20 reps, and you could overload based on that. So you could do more repetitions, or you could even lower the weight and just do more eccentrics. The muscle does not know if you're doing 185 or 225, as long as it's paying attention. I've been preaching that year after year after year. And all I kept saying was, no, if your bench is not getting stronger, you're not getting, you're not gonna get better. And now everyone sees study after study after study on train man is coming out showing that you can reduce your bench press, do more volume, and build just as much muscle as a guy who's increasing his bench press. Did I time travel? And this is just from observation. This is from observation. This is from me seeing that, oh, shit, I got a shoulder injury. I can't bench press anymore. But look, I'm doing these push-ups, high-ass volume. I'm, I'm progressing and overloading the high rep push-ups, even though my, my strength is going down on the, on the bench press, my chest is growing because I'm increasing volume. And our studies are proving that. Right? Look at this one. The study on rest balls, strength for muscular adaptation after six weeks of rest balls. They find out that doing three sets of six gives you the same muscle growth as doing 18 reps rest balls. Which is pretty much just like Nicholas Overload. Because remember, I kept telling you guys, grab an exercise and just keep going. Balls deep. Short rest period. Just keep going. Make sure the weight is not too heavy so that you don't fucking snap your shit up. Because you're going to be doing this every day. Now, of course, you could do it with heavy weight. But like I said, you know, it's not recommended. Why would you do it with heavy ass weights when you could get the same results with lower weight and less risk of injury? And now you got studies showing that the weight doesn't fucking matter. There are so many studies that show that the weight does not matter as long as you train hard. As long as you train close to failure. Effects of drop set. Look at that. 2018. The other one was, I forgot what year this one came out, but it was also after the nucleus overload. This one, 2018, years after. Showing, oh, effects of drop set. Right? And I think there's another study that came after that, and it's from it's from Brad. It's from Brad. Same thing. Showing that you could do three sets of ten and have the same gains as somebody doing one fucking drop set. One drop set. Wasn't I talking about this years ago? That was called a dickhead for saying it? Because my studies were broke, my, my, my observations were bro signs. Right? Extremely high volume. People were saying, oh, nuclear civil load, that's too much volume, so much volume. Well, now we're seeing, look at this study, right? 2015, that was what, two or three years after my nuclear civil load video? And what did I find? And this study from, and it's funny thing, I love this study because Brad, and that's coming up next, Brad did another study. Uh, showing the same thing. These guys did up to 45 sets a week. Let that sink in. 45 sets a week. Right? Because I think uh, one of the groups did five sets uh, uh, three times a day. So that's 15 sets 
I mean, three exercises are five sets. So that's 15 sets a day, three times a week. So 45 sets, up to 45 sets. And they saw better gains than the other group. Now, again, that's, that's, that doesn't apply to everybody. Because, again, if you're a beginner, then you don't need that much volume. But it shows that you got to open your mind. You got to open your mind. Because back then, when I was making Nicholas Solo videos, people were saying, oh, my God, the science shows that if you train more than 10 sets a week, you're going to overtrain and you're going to lose muscle. Fuck you. What about these studies now? Like I said, the science will catch up. Man, I'm cursing so much in this video. Oh, well. I'm just angry, guys. I'm Because uh, I hate... I was getting... You don't understand how much hate I was getting at the time. So much hate. And now all these studies are coming out. All these studies are coming out. Backing up every single part of nuclear solo. And I didn't come up with this shit. That's just observations from watching people ever since I was a fucking kid. Right? And then look, Brad. The GOAT. The greatest of all time. I love Brad so much. But anyway, Brad, Brad comes out. The study in 2019 showing 45 sets, up to 45 sets, led to more hypertrophy. Now, where are all the fucking clowns who told me that I was talking out of my ass for saying that you should do super high volume on nucleus overload? That, oh, no. I mean, I remember uh, one guy made a video saying, oh, nucleus overload is, is full of shit because that's too much volume you're doing. If you're doing nucleus overload every day, you're going to do way more than 10 sets at the end of the week. And if you do more than 10 tests, you're going to overtrain because this study so showed that this and that. What are you going to say now? Right? You got to experiment, guys. Extremely high recovery. Same thing. Oh, look, this, I, I saw this study recently and I, it blew my mind because this study is literally nucleus overload. This it should be called nucleus overload and, <laughs> and I should put my name somewhere over there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just fucking around with you guys. But look at that. This is the nucleus, this is literally a nucleus overload study. Look at that. Um, the guy, long story short, the guys train high frequency, uh, blood flow restriction. So it's literally nucleus overload. Uh, I think it was like, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Separated by 10 percent. They train, took a break and they found out that guess what? The gains came after. Look, it's called delayed myonuclear addition. Delayed. What was that? And this was in what? 2019. I was telling you guys this shit in 20 fucking 11, 2012 and 2013. That you will not see the gains right away. They're going to come later. And I kept telling you, I don't have a study to prove it, but the science will catch up eventually. And look at that. Years later, boom. They find out, that, and, and they, they call it overreaching. So they find out that if you overreach, which is the fucking same thing as what I was saying the whole time. You know, and I kept telling you, I was using the word overtraining because that's what people were calling it. But, I, but I, I made a distinction between overtraining a muscle and being in an overtrained state. I kept telling you guys that's two different things. Well... They call it overreaching, so let's fucking call it overreaching. But anyway, they show the same thing, right? Overreaching for a short period of time leads to delayed gains. So you're not going to see the gains right away. So people saying, well, I tried to so low, it didn't work because I didn't see my fucking bigger uh, uh, chest the next day. Idiot, I told you the gains would come later. You're just trying to accumulate the, the, you're just trying to accumulate the nuclei. Then you want to take the break to resensitize mTOR. And then when you come back to your regular program, that's when you see the gains. Go back to the videos. They're still on YouTube. Time stamped. And look, look, look what the study shows. The exact same thing. Moral of the story, bro science has its fucking place. Now, again, I know there's a lot of people who, who just over abuse bro science and just come up with random ass theories and stuff like that. But the stuff I was telling you guys, I was showing you guys overwhelming evidence. I was showing you guys a ton of stories. A ton of stories. Right? Bro science has its place as long as you balance it with science. That's why I keep saying the goal of my channel is to look at the research because I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. I love science. I love reading research papers. So, so the goal is to balance science with what the experts are saying with what the people who are actually in the gym or observing people in the gym are seeing and to find a middle ground. Because you can find a study to prove any fucking thing. I could find a study right now that says that uh, building muscle is bad for you. I can find a study that says that uh, three sets is, is better than one set, and another one's gonna say that one set is better than three. You can find a study to prove anything. Same thing, you can find a bro science retard who's gonna tell you that, you know, spinning and jerking, I don't know, fucking jerking off three times a day is gonna give you bigger forearms. I don't know. Right? So there's, there's errors on both sides. That's why you gotta look for the middle ground. Keep an open mind. Second point drop your bullshit ego. All the clowns who made videos saying, uh, 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 nuclear solo doesn't work. It's bullshit. Da, da, da. What do you got to say now? Drop your fucking ego. I fucking hate it. Like, keep an open mind. 
a lot of times people will bash nuclear overload just because it wasn't their idea. Or just because they didn't, they didn't come up with the idea. Just because they didn't prescribe it, then I don't know where it's all. Oh, it's bullshit because I didn't. It's it's, it's a fu- it's fucking ego, because I didn't come up with it, so it must be bullshit. Shut the fuck up, and you know who you are. Drop your fucking ego. That expert bias bullshit is gonna make you look stupid. And finally, nucleus overload is the fastest way for naturals to grow. Period. Hands down. Way faster. Than, and again, I said it's the fastest way. I didn't say that all the other methods don't work. Right, you can still make sick gains, training once a once a week or whatever. But that doesn't mean it's optimal. That doesn't mean you're gonna make fat. If you're natty, let's be honest. If we're natty, we're trying to build muscle fast. We're not trying to fucking wait three, four years. Yes, eventually it's gonna be a long process. But if I can make muscle faster in a safer way, why not? So that's it, guys. Sorry, this video was way way too long. Uh, let me look at my what. My stopwatch. Holy shit, over an hour. Yeah, I'm fucked. Just watch it at two times speed. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. Hopefully, that settles it once and for all. And keep in mind, that's why I didn't publish the Nucleus of a Little Book. I wanted, I wanted you guys to know that this was not about the money. I'm not selling a single piece of Nucleus of a Little I'm not selling Nucleus of a Little Book. The book is not even out yet. People kept telling me, Jonathan, make the book, make the book, make the book. And what did I keep saying? I kept saying, I'm not making a book yet because if I if I drop the book, everyone is going to think that it's a fad. It's me just trying to get rich quick, whatever. And I was like, fuck it. It's not that serious. Look at the stories. This way you will know that there was no incentive behind it. And if you go to my comment section, everyone's like, really, it's a book? It's amazing. You know, I, I tried it and it worked. I was like, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. until And that's why I keep releasing. Everything that's going to be in the book is already in the videos anyway. So there's not like, oh, he's doing this for the money. I first mentioned Nucleus Overload in 2011. We're in 2019 now. So if I wanted to make money, I would have literally released the book as soon as possible. I'm taking my sweet ass time because, again, what's the need? So anyway, going off tangent here. Hope this video helps. Hope that answers all the questions on Nucleus Overload. How, how to apply it? I have several videos explaining it. Pick a muscle. Um, you know, fucking unleash hell on it for four weeks, right? Try not to get injured. So try to pick, you know, cable exercises, whatever, you know, pick the safest exercises possible. Overload the muscle for four weeks. Take a long break. When you come back to training, that muscle will grow faster when you return to your normal, heavy, whatever routine. That's the idea. All right? Hope this video helps. I'm out of here. Oh, don't forget to like. Don't forget to share the video with all the clowns who said it was BS. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell. I'm out of here.